All right. Thank you, Dr. Liao, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Glad to join you. Yeah. And um, for for those who don't know, uh, Dr. Liao is a author of five books. He's focused on mind, body, mouth, and airway and how everything is connected. And um, before we jump into your presentation, just full disclosure for those that are listening, I am a huge super groupie, uh, have read so much of your work, and it, it really is what brought all of this into focus for me and really just as a parent and as a patient, just kind of, I don't know, it was like this brick wall I ran into and went, oh my goodness. So uh, I'm super excited to share your presentation and your message with everyone today, because I really think both parents and medical professionals are going to have something, you know, substantial to take away from this today. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share what I know. I believe uh, this is a crucial topic for the health and well-being of both the children and the parents raising them. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I'm grateful for your work and I'm happy to contribute to your cause. So thank here you. we go. Let's jump in. Go ahead. Nope, let's jump in. Let's do it. All right. So my first message is from no less than the highest medical officer in our land. U.S. Surgeon General, way back in the year 2000, said oral health is more than healthy teeth. All right. So it's time to widen our viewfinders from toothpaste commercials and, you know, water pegs and brushing and flossing to expand it to whole body health by mouth. If you think okay. about it, that's how we all grow. From the mouth, from the moment we we're born, take that first breath, okay? We mm -hmm. breathe first, then we cry, then we get fed. And what happens after babies are fed? They go to sleep. They sleep. Repeat the cycle. Less the spanking, and that's how we grow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, right. we grow from the mouth. And I'm fond of saying that the roots, that the mouth is to humans what roots are to plants. Okay. So how the mouth operates is crucial to whether or not this child or this human being thrives or wilts and suffers. Okay. So let's just get the medical thing out of the way and just check in with our common sense for a second. If you were a movie director, mm -hmm. how would you want your child's face to grow up into? Would you want the child to have this face on the right or on the left? Right. I would this say Catherine Hepburn on the right, right? Yeah, Catherine this Hepburn. is just yeah. common sense, right? Okay, we instinctively know that the one on the right is more desirable and attractive. So you, as a movie director, would never cast this one as your lead actress, right? Right. Well, why would you want your kid not to grow up to be the lead actor or actress? Mm -hmm. If you look carefully here, you will see that her profile fits this sign. I saw it so often that I gave it a very simple name, Liao's sign, okay? That's my last name, it's four little words. It's hard to forget it once you see it, which is that in profile, the upper lip drops straight down or worse yet, curls inward. It means there's collapse as a result of teeth and bones not growing enough to support the upper lip. So a fuller okay. dental facial development will result in a more convex outline. So a flat profile means that all the furnitures have been shoved against the back wall. So mm -hmm. the airway corridor is cut off. Okay. So those of you who are looking at a CT scan for the first time, the color scale goes like this. 
the white end is wide open, like a four lane highway. The okay. more you go in the direction of the red and off the scale black, you're into one lane and a half to one lane. So black is one quarter the width of white. So this is a choked airway, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Once you have choked airway, it's very difficult to recover from anything because what do you need <laughs> for recovery and health and well-being? You need this first, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna look at that and relate it to this, all right? So my message to all you parents out there now with this new book is that your child's best space is now within your power to actualize, all right? You're no longer mm -hmm. sitting duck for orthodontist bills. Oh, we know that's coming in 14 years, just like you know college tuition is coming, right? Right, right. Um, you know, you can actually grow kids now predictably, okay? So that they're healthy, vibrant, and just a ton of fun to be with, okay? I showed this okay. in particular because this kid didn't have any expanders, didn't have any dentist treatment. This is just good nutrition. Okay. Right? But it's not your standard American diet. <laughs> mm. You want to see spaces between baby teeth, okay? Because the adult mm -hmm. teeth are bigger and these are placeholders for the adult teeth, okay? So mm -hmm. teeth that are touching in, in the ch child's mouth under six years old, that's crowding already. And that's a sign. So, I practice as an airway mouth doctor. That's what a AMD stands for. You'll see a picture of that later on. But okay. this is how I practice. So you can see barely that this patient is smiling. There's no shots, there's no drills, there's no pain, and there are only benefits. Because I work on this, like this here, outside the patient's mouth, okay? So hmm. uh, my patients don't get any work done inside the mouth. That's what an airway mouth doctor does. So the kid won't be won't need to kick and scream as soon as they get there, uh, uh, as if they were going to a dentist's office for a cavity fill or tooth pull. Okay. Yeah, this is an entirely new field within dentistry. It's a new frontier, if you will. So here's the problem that we commonly see. Okay. Uh, 14 kids show up for a bus with 10 seats. Yeah. Why? Right? And mm -hmm. what's the right thing to do? All right, we're going to talk about this. Okay. What I can tell you right now is that um, this most important piece of research conclusion, this is out of Stanford. Yushu Huang runs a... Um, hospital with uh, um, premature pediatric obstructive sleep apnea children. And mm -hmm. Christian Guillermino is out of Stanford Sleep Center, yeah. the most premier research center on pediatric obstructive sleep apnea in the world. Mm -hmm. And so the paper is on the critical role of oral facial growth. And their conclusion is this. Pediatric obstructive sleep apnea in non-obese children is a disorder of oral facial growth. Failure to thrive here creates sleep apnea. Okay. Pretty straightforward, so, yep. This is as, as revolutionary as Surgeon General statement that I quoted earlier, that a healthy mouse is more than healthy teeth right? The mouth mm -hmm. content is way more than just teeth, okay? Now we're talking about oral facial growth. Who's in charge of that? Well, looking at the number of cases that we have, uh, the answer is so far, nobody. And so there is a serious need for what I call an airway mouth doctor who is trained to take charge of oral facial growth. And I'm here to show you what happens when you don't and what happens when you do, okay? Okay, all right. So here's a case in an eight-year-old. That's her mouth on the right. This is her posture on the left. 
they are connected. One package, okay? Your heart, your brain, your mouth, and your feet all share the same physical address. You're one package. Okay. This concept is called whole health, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we do not separate the body into pieces and work on pieces. We work on putting all the pieces back online into a functional whole, all right? And this mm -hmm. piece is missing. This piece is being missing in the care of health. So instead, we can do this. So she came to me when she was 11 years old like this, you know, typical okay. average crowd of teeth, tilted head. You know, she looks at me with her left eye more than with her right eye. You can see that the left ear is more turned toward me. And mm -hmm. so three and a half years later, no braces. All right. She ended up here. What happened between this case and the previous case? All right. Not only that, here's the postural change. Okay. When you have good wide arches and straight teeth, you will have good posture. Why? Because the body does not have to struggle. One thing parents need to know is that babies grow from the top down. Mm -hmm. A newborn cannot hold up its head. So they've got to hold the head a certain way so that you can breastfeed, all right? Right, right. It takes about six months or so of feeding, sleeping, breastfeeding, and sleeping before they grow enough to grasp things into their hands. And then where does it mm -hmm. go? Right here. In their mouth. Uh -huh. In the mouth, okay? They yeah. drool like mad, okay? Then they can crawl. Then they can waddle, gradually stand up and walk. So we grow from the top down. This is a really important relationship to remember, okay? Mm -hmm. And the mouth is to humans what roots are to plants. If you get this part wrong, you're going to see something like this. The rest of the body is going to pay a price. So imagine you have a thumbnail in your boot that you cannot take off. Okay. After a while, you're going to walk funny, dance around that so that it doesn't irritate you. And then pretty mm -hmm. soon you're going to have low back pain and then neck pain. Right. It's just going to ripple through the postural chain to spread it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, here you have 28 thumbtacks, not just one. That's how mm -hmm. bothersome it is to the body. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So when you get this part wrong, it's 28 thumbtacks in your boot, bothering the body. Okay. So how do we get the body to thrive and grow right the first time? So we need to understand this concept that I call holistic mouth. I mean, it seems silly that we have to put the word holistic in front of the mouth. <laughs> It's because we have this mentality, uh, mm -hmm. tunnel vision mentality, silo right. mentality. Uh, right. Dentists do teeth, doctors do vaccinations on kids and, mm -hmm. and, and surgery and drugs. And what happens to basic physiology that makes the body work? Well, sorry, that's why I had to put the word holistic in front of the word mouth. Because we do have something else, okay, that is not holistic mouth. So I define a holistic mouth as one that is structurally fit and sensibly used to support full body health with these functions. Alignment, breathing, circulation, digestion, energy, and sleep. That's what the mouth does. The mouth does not have a simple job description. The mouth has a multi-purpose description, okay? So when you have these, the body will thrive. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture that could only represent three of the six functions because otherwise it gets too confusing. Green is air, red is circulation, yellow is digestion. Okay. okay. And the mouth purpose is to supply energy to the body so that it could grow in the case of children. It could thrive in the case of adults with energy to work, perform, and 
be soccer mom and hold down a full time job and be a sweetheart all at the same time in 24 right. hours. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, an AMD is trained on the oral facial growth to help parents nurture the best face. Okay. Because the mouth can do all of this. I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does. What happens when the mouth is not structurally fit? What happens when you have deficient jaws and choked airway? Then you're going to end up with lots of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. These symptoms, every one of these have been reported to me by my patients as being improved after their impaired mouth structure got turned into a more holistic mouth, able to provide these functions to them. So they end up with better sleep. They end up with less pain. They end up with less food sensitivity. They end up not having to reach for dark chocolate and coffee all day in order to get through the work day. Right. And I want to interject real fast on that last slide because I know that image that is this, this book. And for any parent that hasn't read it, it's on our must read meaningless, meaningless reading list, the six foot tiger, three foot cage. I'm telling you, not only will it change the way you approach your child's mouth health or oral health, but it's really going to put a lot of things in perspective because I just, I kept reading it going, that's me. Oh my gosh, that's me. Oh my gosh, that's me. It was really eye-opening. So I just want to interject that. Thank you, Rebecca. So a syndrome, a syndrome, mm -hmm. it means that it's not just one outcome. It's multiple symptoms arising from one condition. I'll have a slide on that later. Okay. So um, this, this airway uh, is correlated with the facial structure. So you can see from the outside what's underneath, okay? So when mm -hmm. you have a facial profile that looks like somebody who took a um, hacksaw and just bust through the convex part of it, like they cut it off right here, then you end up with mm -hmm. something like this. And this would always result in a lesser airway because the okay. tongue is fully mature at birth. So it's precociously developed ahead of jaws and teeth because the tongue needs to be 100% functional. Otherwise, it cannot nurse. <laughs> and right. So the child won't survive, right? So it necessarily de develops on a different track and a timeline compared to the jaws. And okay. yet the space between the two jaws is the home office for the tongue. Mm -hmm. So when the home office for the tongue is too small, the tongue has no place to go. And so that's how I come up with this title, Six Foot Tiger, Three Foot Cage. All right. So there's a condition whereby when the face doesn't grow enough and you end up with crowded teeth, uh, guess what happens? They get four teeth pulled. Mm -hmm. brace. Okay, so this orthodontist took tremendous courage to publish this book. These are twins. Okay. okay. This one had teeth taken off for braces. This one did not. So you ladies decide which one you, which face you rather have. Mm -hmm. okay. And you gentlemen, you decide who you rather ask out to the prom, right? Mm -hmm. And this is lifelong, okay? You cannot right, put right. back teeth that are pulled out, okay? Right. Yeah. So these are children that are made worse for the rest of their adult life when they have teeth pulled. In children, what we want to do is recognize these red flags early. So CSI stands for Crime Scene Investigation. So mm -hmm. you look at this, you look for clues, right? Clues mm -hmm. that says, you know, my kid is starting to do, develop early signs of impaired mouth syndrome. And these are the clues. Tongue tie, and I'll show you pictures of them later. Okay. Tongue tie, tongue thrust, chapped lips, you know, bluish lips. Mm -hmm. All children's lips should be pink. 
Pink is life. Blue is near death. Okay, code blue mm -hmm. in hospital means what? You bring out the crash cards. Right. Low oxygen. Tilted head, uneven eyes. Uh, if you look at her, his earlobes, they are not even. If you look at her, mm -hmm. his eyes, they are not even. If you look at the nostrils, they're asymmetrical. They're not even. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Weak chain, lackluster face. Uh, every day you go through life like this. Right. All right. Or every day they go through life like this. Mm -hmm. I'm from Taiwan. In Chinese culture, if we want to depict someone who is dumb and idiot and an idiot, we just make the mouth like this. Stupid. Look stupid. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so bullying comes from what? Kids instinctive read of a the person in front of them is being weaker than they are. That's why bullying mm -hmm. comes out. Okay. Right. So frequent ear, nose, and throat infections. Well, <laughs> if you just breathe through your mouth uh, and you don't use your nose, mm -hmm. bacteria and viruses get to march straight down your tonsils, bypassing the admissions office where they could be held up met and greed and kill. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you have stuffy nose, it's a big problem, not only dentally, facially, but also immunologically. Kids should not mm -hmm. grind their teeth. Kids should not snore. Okay. Right. Finger, it's not sucking, cute. finger sucking is simply the kids attempt to relieve their cranial strain. So don't slap them. They're trying to signal you, hey, I need help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Uh, bed wetting. Well, when we're scared, you know, that's when they wet their pants, right? Mm -hmm. Well, why are they scared? Because their airways choked. They can articulate that. But right. that's why we need to be able to read these signs at the crime scene so that we can help them. Okay. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, ADHD is all over the place. Lethargic is another place. Moodiness. How about seasonal affective disorder, all right? These are all related uh, to airway and to jaw and facial development. Okay. Here's a weak chin, okay? This is called a big overjet. The upper and lower front teeth the low, uh, is um, got a huge gap between them and the dental mm -hmm. midlines are off, okay? So the kid has this deer in the headlight look. Because the system is stressing um, from these uh, from this mouth. Remember the 28 thumbtacks, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they're right. all right. sending signals to the brain, you would look like this. Okay. And so why? Why does this kid end up looking like this? Well, here's a quick and dirty summary. Birth trauma. Okay. Uh, when babies are born, their heads are squeezed. Mm -hmm. uh, then when a baby is forming, the head is turned and this is called crown molding, molded against the maternal pelvic floor, the, okay. the birth canal opening. If that birth canal is asymmetrical, the kid's face come out asymmetrical. If it's nice and round and even, you have an easy oh. child. All right. Okay. So birth trauma. And so what happens when the, the the birth canal opening is just enough to squeeze, but not so easy to squeeze through, okay? That's when they end up with the cranial strain. Mm -hmm. That's when they end up trying to suck their thumb because it's never recognized. It's a separate can that topic. impact their Can that impact their palate as well? Yeah, absolutely. Causing a higher absolutely. tone, absolutely. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, tongue tie, um, and maternal hypothyroidism, I'm really big on that. Um, air and water contaminants, typical standard American diet, rich in all kinds of no-nos. Mm -hmm. uh, that causes stuffy nose and therefore results in habitual mouth breathing. Uh, you know, these are things that nobody pay attention to. And the parents are stuck with kids that end up with these conditions. 
I'll show you how this case is resolved because the mom happened to be a patient of mine and she understand what impaired mouse syndrome was. Okay. 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 So here is teeth grinding. Here's lip tie. Here's head tilt. That means that where the head is mounted on the neck, it mm -hmm. is not true. It's like your steering wheel. When you drive in the parking lot, you let go of your steering wheel. It pulls to one side, you know that the front end is off. Well, right. here, where the head in, is joined to the neck, the joint is off. And all you ask this child to do is just look up, and his head naturally just went look that up, way. Yeah, and you can tell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can have him stand next to a door frame and you in place of this grid, and you'll okay. be fine. You'll be able okay. to tell. What you're looking for is whether or not the ear lobes are even whether or not corner of the mouth are even with the floor. They're not, mm -hmm. okay? So head tilt in a kid is not cute. It's pathological. Pathological so that if we don't catch this, he'll be a regular at a chiropractor's office when he grows okay. up, okay? So this is called a cross bite, okay? Cross bite means that the upper jaw did not grow enough for the lower jaw to fit into. So the, you said the upper jaw should be like a shoe mm -hmm. and lower should be like a foot. Mm -hmm. fit into it. Okay. Which one needs okay. to be bigger? The shoe needs to be bigger. Okay. Right. In this case, the upper jaw, the shoe is not wide enough for the foot. And that's why his head tilted. Okay. And when we did this, guess what? It's now perfectly level. Mm. Okay. Believe me, this kid's school work, it's easier for him to get done. This one has the same IQ, but it's harder for this kid to get his homework done because there are 28 thumbtacks attacking mm -hmm. his nervous system, okay? Right, okay. So here's what happens two years later between a mouth doctor's work and a postural restoration physical therapist. He went from here to here from here to here. Hmm. Notice how much he grew in two years because his airway is better. His nervous system is more at peace. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is teeth grinding in adults. Lots of sensitivity from this app fractions. It means missing a piece. These are very sensitive to cold and brushing. Chips, okay. cracks, uh, broken teeth, um, crowns, root canals, implants, other expensive work in dentistry comes from teeth grinding. Okay. We're born with enough enamel to last us a lifetime, but not when we grind our teeth. Okay. Okay. So when we grind our teeth, we don't just have one dental symptom. Here are eight of them. So I invite every one of you parents to check this out, see how many of these you have. You don't have to tell me, just count it with your own fingers, okay? Because mm -hmm. they're all connected to the mouth and the airway. And when you have these symptoms, you have a choked airway and you have an impaired mouth. Here's an example. This girl didn't come to me, um, well, um, as a regular patient, she came at, toward the end of the pandemic. She didn't go to the dentist for two years. She ended up okay. with a bunch of teeth. That's her airway. Wow. Okay, this is a choke zone. I mean, here's a mm -hmm. perfect hourglass, okay? Uh, you don't want that. You may want that in your figure, but you don't want that in your airway. Not in your airway. Mm -hmm. Not in your airway, okay? So this is what she looked like in the mouth, okay? And mm -hmm. I show you th this many pictures because, you know, most dentists are not dentists and they don't have so many opportunities to look into so many mouths. But you need to understand that dental crowding came from somewhere. It's mm -hmm. not just genes. I'm telling you, even if you have bad genes, you still can end up with a good face and straight teeth without braces. You have okay. to know how to bring this on, okay? Mm -hmm. So one of the big no-nos is tongue tie. This is a severe case of a tongue tie. 
the parents happen to be healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. They're doctors of some kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you see this tongue tie, there's always a bad bite, crowded lower front teeth, a badly rotated teeth. Okay. So when you have tongue tie, you're going to have malocclusion and lackluster face. Okay. Okay. So this came from somewhere. And one of the original sins is tongue tie. And where does the tongue tie come from? I don't have research study on this, but I have a field sense from seeing thousands of cases that it has to do with mother's maternal can have a direct influence on whether or not the kid end up with tongue tie. So the mother can. Yeah. Hypothyroidism is endemic in the United States. Mm -hmm. There's a book out called, if my thyroid test is normal, why do I still feel so terrible? Okay, because mm -hmm. so many people in the United States are hypothyroid that the normal isn't healthy anymore. The reference range, okay, is mm -hmm. too low and you need to insist on being at the 100 percentile of your reference range. 60 percentile is not good enough. Okay. Okay. Now, how do we end up here, right? We'll go into that later. But here's a really important takeaway. You need to have wide dental arches before you can have straight teeth. And if you have wide dental arches, everything in your body will work well, including eyesight including all the internal organ, including your learning, your optimistic mm -hmm. outlook, including your athleticism, including your brain functions, including in the future down the road, childbirth, okay? And mm -hmm. if you don't have a wide arch, but instead you have crooked teeth or narrow dental arches, Everything else will pay a price. Why? Because like I said earlier, we grow from the top down. down. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you start out with this as a foundation being squeezed, so is the rest of the body, especially in the face of all these other conditions that we mentioned earlier. Okay. This is just perpetuates a bad start, okay? Mm. So we want to end up like this and how do we get there, okay? Here is a dentist who took AMD training to become an airway mouth doctor and uh, this is her daughter. Okay. 11 months later, she went from here to here, from the left, to the middle, hmm. okay? All we did was gave her this appliance and a bone building diet, all right? So this is now possible within everybody's reach, as long as you can find a airway mouth doctor to work with. So- And when you say everybody, you mean adults as well. Is it too late for yes, us? Yes, yes, this, this, okay. is, this is true for adults. Yes, good point. So um, this is the appliance that uh, I came up with. Uh, it's trademarked to um, help to redevelop and realign the jaws to reduce pain connected to impaired mouth. This is in adults. The kids don't have pain. They usually don't complain about that. Okay. Teeth grinding, TMJ, um, dysfunctions, and snoring, and upper airway resistance syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... It looks like this. The detail is not important. What is important is to see that there are gears here that you can turn that will widen when okay. the jaws and stimulate jaw growth. And when you stimulate jaw growth, 
you make room in the mouth for the tongue and therefore you don't choke the airway. That's the principle okay. of six foot tiger, three foot cage. And this is a permanent appliance or it's temporary well, while no, you go there's through? A, there's an active treatment period and after which you're, you graduate from that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this is a bone building diet. You got to give the bone something to grow with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't stay in the American diet, put them on an appliance and expect it to grow. It's called oxymoron. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, the green smoothies, uh, you can do anything you want. Here's avocado, optional chocolate powder, peach, uh, raspberry in the bottom, blueberry on the top, and a, a bit of arugula in the foundation of this um, this pitcher. And just hit, uh, hit uh, blend, and here you got it. You make your own um, green smoothies or VA juice in home. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's not that hard. And so here's what happened, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the jaw becomes naturally wide. Uh, there's facial glow, okay? Uh, the kid does their homework with ease now. She's trained to be a soprano and she can hit high notes with ease now. So mm -hmm. you can maximize the kid's potential that way. And look at the facial convexity here. Okay, that means that there is not a choke airway in the back. Mm -hmm. So how it works is that the gears, you turn this twice a week in kids, once a week usually in, in adults, except in hypothyroid patients. And as these gaps widens out, the jaws grow with it in the presence of a bone building diet. Okay. And so after wearing this for a year, well, yeah, 12 months, she went from here to here, okay? So now you can see that the upper jaw is starting to become almost wide enough for the lower jaw now. And mm -hmm. that the lower teeth are not nearly as crowded, okay? So this kid is on her way to become a fully actualized best face. So, Here's what happens when you take out teeth, all right? Uh, here, everybody should have two pairs of these premolars between the canines and the first molars. Okay. This patient only has one pair because uh, she went, she got sent to orthodontist when she was a teenager because of crowded teeth and to make room to line up the rest of the teeth, um, they took out one tooth here, one tooth here, one tooth here, one tooth here, for a total of four. So she ended up looking like this, and she ended up with all these symptoms. Hmm. She has regular chiropractic care, and she still have neck pain and headache that keeps coming back and back and back. Why? Because of the 28 thumbtacks that I mentioned earlier, okay? Mm -hmm. She's grinding wore her molars flat. I mean, she has no peak and valley in her molars anymore, okay? Everything yeah. is worn down flat, okay? And they're sensitive, okay? Mm -hmm. She wakes up three to four times a night and hard to go back to sleep. Well, <laughs> that's really hard when you're a mother of five kids, okay? Yeah. Uh, especially you try to make it through the next day. Okay. She wakes up with a sore jaw in the morning. She has pain in the hand and the feet, cold hands and feet always, hypothyroidism, yeah. low body temperature, okay? So she braces again as an adult. That's a huge red flag. What didn't they get right the first time? Mm -hmm. All right. And why would you keep doing the same thing? Over and over, yep. All right? Okay. She wake up feeling refreshed only once a week. I mean, six days a week, she is falling behind. She catches up mm -hmm. one day a week, okay? So this is a quick way to get old fast. Right. Where she hurts, okay, as a result of a worse, more aggravated case of impaired mouth syndrome. Long story short, one day 
She came in and said, hey, no more migraine in the past eight weeks. So we can reverse this, but in extraction cases where um, you have fewer teeth, you have a smaller home office space mm -hmm. uh, for the same size tongue. Because when she had four teeth taken out, guess what happened? The tongue didn't get made smaller. Right. Okay. So now you have a smaller home office space for the same size tongue. Mm -hmm. And that whole office space was undersized to begin with. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. why she made it smaller. Right. right. So now you have a two foot cage. Okay. So we mm -hmm. have a, I have a um, impaired mouse syndrome score and just fill this out and connect the dots. And this is available at this website here. If you want to Okay. Yeah. It's in the book. Okay. Okay. So here's a patient who reached out to me from another continent on the other side of the world after reading the six foot tiger, three foot cage book. And she checked every box except one on the mouth column. The only thing she didn't have is frequent cavities. Okay. And she checked every box on the medical side except for two boxes, which is high blood pressure, heart disease, and uh, pot belly and overweight. Okay. Okay. So this is what uh, she looks like here. One look and you know that she's mm -hmm. suffering. Right, right. You, right. Can say, you can say that she's got straight white teeth, no argument here. My, my question is, what is the definition of success? Is straight white teeth enough? Or does miserable owner of these teeth count as clinical success? We shouldn't mm -hmm. ignore that, right? right? So there's a lot of suffering in my experience that come from these uh, extraction cases. So this patient reached out because she said, my teeth don't align, my bite is off, my lower jaw collapses into my throat, hindering my breathing, and all this tension and stress and pain in my jaw and throat affects my mental state every day, and they've contributed to my suicidal desires, help me back in all areas of my life. That's her airway. Look at all the red and black. Poor wow. thing. That's you know, my, my heart wept when I read this. I mean, just make sure the scale shows up for you. Yeah. So again, all because she had teeth taken out and the she ended up with a two-foot cage. Mm. What a top. Okay. So mm -hmm. fast forward, 10 months later, she went from here to here. Her face changed. Okay, mm -hmm. she's got a better bite and she doesn't have jaw pain anymore. And you can fit three fingers between your upper and lower front teeth. That means your TMJ is grossly within normal limits. That's the medical okay. lingo we use to see that, yeah, you're not in trouble. Okay. All right. So you can see that the facial radiance is starting to come back. We, mm -hmm pretty much pulled her from the brink of suicide. So there are a lot of adults who don't have that severe a case, but they're suffering fatigue and pain, okay? So this face has Leo sign and the, she has an airway in the red and the black zone, okay? Mm. The minimal cross-sectional area in the white zone is 400. In her case, it's 50. You do the math. Right. Suppose you have one eighth of your income. How do you survive? Mm -hmm. All right. So for suffering adults, I have a new book coming on how you can fix yourself based on the same principles. All right. Um, it'll be released uh, January 2nd or so. It's called mm -hmm. Relaunch Your Bank. How to root out chronic pain and fatigue to enjoy life again. Back on topic, 
on how to bring on the best face Aww. with top health. Okay, this is my granddaughter. Okay, mm -hmm. pretty much five month old, six month old. The lower front teeth start to come out. This is when started graph things and put them. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. They drool over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm telling you, this is the time when you absolutely have to take control uh, of um, this child's dental facial development. Okay. Uh, okay. If you do that, then you could make the difference between whether you're going to struggle uh, as a parent or the child's going to thrive. Obviously, the better the child thrives, the easier your job is as a parent. So how do you do sure. that? Okay. Uh, it takes all of these things here. We don't have time to go over all everything. I want to show you as many cases as time allows, uh, mm -hmm. but the, it's discussed in this book, um, Your okay. Child's Best. Okay. So okay. whether this kid grows up with this long, horsey, narrow face with these jumbo teeth, okay? And this is called vertical excess long face syndrome, okay? All right. Uh, because when you breathe with your mouth open, your face goes long and your jaw goes narrow and your teeth becomes crowded and your nose gets stuffy. And so you end up with this lip incompetence. And when you tell the child to close her lips, she has to strain because her face has gone too long. Mm, okay. So this... By the time she came to me as a 10-year-old, the horses have long left the barn because right. the dentist saw its job description as just fixing the cavities. It okay. missed the bigger picture of seeing the whole child, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the standard of practice, okay? But I am saying that there's a new frontier to develop okay. best face, okay? You need healthy teeth. I don't mm -hmm. mean to put down the family dentists who focus on teeth, mm -hmm. but beyond teeth, there's the whole person. And mm -hmm. the mouth occupied, occupies a pivotal place in the performance of this whole body, whether in health or in illness or pain. So what failed to happen in this case, all right? The doctors didn't mm -hmm. get the training in, in school. Uh, right. It's not his fault, okay? Right, because don't know what you don't know. New frontier that we're just trying to see beyond teeth, okay? Mm -hmm. And this affects the whole child's mood, self-esteem, and internal functions, including learning. Instead, you want to raise kids like this, okay? Just a joy to behold, a pleasure mm -hmm. to be, okay? And they're just not a problem in terms of having to take them to doctors all the time, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we have a choice. We have a choice to grow, grow, grow the kids in this direction instead of unknowingly, okay, using the same old tunnel vision approach and end up with the impaired mouth syndrome. And so that's and where the retractive braces are, right? They're on the exactly. impaired mouth syndrome. That makes path. it worse. That, right. Yeah. That makes the impaired mouth syndrome worse. So airway mouth doctors and airway mouth consultants. Consultants are all the healthcare professionals who are not dentists. Consultants okay. are myofunctional therapists. Consultants are advocates like you. Uh, who uh, serve as an informational hub for mm -hmm. parents and healthcare professionals. Uh, we have a certain criteria on how to become an airway mouth consultant. If you're interested, you can contact me at the end of this lecture. I'll show you how to reach me. But we have consultants that uh, help spread the word and raise the awareness. So here's the awareness. This girl has the same genes. She has the same teeth. 
but she has a completely different face and a different mm -hmm. appearance to her face. Okay. What happened? Well, she came to me looking like this. And she said, I had grown through my night guard. See my cursor here on the lower right. Wow. Grown through my night guard that my orthodontist had given me. And this is called an anterior open bite. This is a colossal failure. And orthodontists who produce a result like this would not graduate from dental school or graduate school. Okay. This is a colossal failure. And so I asked her, what's the definition of insanity? And I said, would you like to explore the root cause of this anterior open bite? And it's because of this tongue thrust. So the question is, why does she have a tongue thrust? Okay, mm -hmm. because it's this tongue that's producing this force that bends this tree, or in this case, pry open the uh, Alcatraz prison bars. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the most powerful orthodontic instrument there is. But in this case, it's doing this because it doesn't want to choke the air away. It's right. actually trying to get out, okay? And <laughs> it pry the teeth apart, okay? So the diagnosis in her orthodontic treatment missed the airway. And the tongue reacted by doing this. Trying to make space, right? Exactly. So we use an expander like this where you widen the um, jaw mm. side to side, front and back, and that makes space between the two jaws. And guess what happened? The tongue stopped thrusting. Mm. Okay. And the face changed. Yep. Right? That is amazing. We taught her what to eat so that she didn't get stuffy nose. We put her through something called myofunctional therapy that literally amounts to physical therapy for the mouth muscles, including mm -hmm. the tongue. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lip seal, this is the same child, same eyes, but same nose, but completely different face, just because mm -hmm. of this. A question I, I've heard you mention before, and, and since I can see it on the slide, her chin from that side profile um that that's one of the signs that you look for correct yes 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 so and that's because the jaw is back or is that what causes that because remember we said that the upper jaw should be like the shoe for the lower mm -hmm. jaw for the foot mm -hmm. well when the shoe is not wide enough the foot can fit into it so okay. the shoe is left hanging out. That, that's why it's, we call it retruded. This is the opposite of protruded. So when the upper jaw is widened enough, you can see a higher cheekbone here. Um, the uh, lower jaw can come forward oh. and fit, and that opens up the airway and that's what gives her the glow. Okay. Okay. So the secret always, always, always is this thing that I tried to show you earlier, which is this, okay? That came from mm -hmm. this slide, okay? So uh -huh. wide dental arches is good for whole body health. Narrow dental arches that come with crowded teeth uh, is not good for dental health, okay? So that's what this is about. The purple okay. bone here is the maxilla or the upper jaw. Okay. You want this arch to be wide, Look at the nostrils here. They're mm -hmm. wide open. I mean, she's a good nasal breather. What you don't use, you lose. <laughs> that includes your nostrils. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So <clears throat> good questions. So that's how this works. And in the process, we tripled her airway. Okay. Wow, and that is amazing. Looking, okay. Same genes. Completely different expression. All right, I was going to say, look at her eyes. Yeah, this is what epigenetic means, okay? And this is now within every parent's power to harness and bring on. This is also within um, every 
adult patients to bring on. She was 17 when she came to me. She was about 20 years old here, okay? Trust me, it also worked for a 67 year old. So here's the science um, behind the principles of epigenetic dental facial development. Again, look at this, great posture. And she got recruited to be a model part-time. So oh, um, good things come from having a great face. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So um, an airway mouth doctor, an airway mouth consultant, meaning a non-dentist um, uh, uh, healthcare professional or advocates can um, serve as parental guides so that the parents can bring on the best face or top health for their kids. Okay. So we see this all the time. Okay, here's a five-year-old with impaired mouth syndrome. So one look, you can tell, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The child is obese, right? The child's mm -hmm. got pinched nostrils. His lips are apart. He's got supersized tongue, right? He's got mm -hmm. spaces mm -hmm. between his front teeth, which is good. <clears throat> but he's grinding the daylight out of them. And these are his symptoms. Hmm. Got lots of allergies. Okay, she's got dark circles under his eyes. We protected his privacy because you know these are sensitive things, and we don't want to sure. show your face. Okay, poor school performance, and <clears throat> here's what happened: mother was desperate for help. The father said, "Huh, if insurance doesn't cover it, must not be important." Well, if the insurance company doesn't think airway is important, should you ignore it? Right. Right? So at some point, you're going to have to take charge of your child's health and well-being into your own mm -hmm. hand. Because your doctors don't always know this, okay? So USCDC says epigenetics is how your behavior and your environment can cause changes to affect the way your genes work. So we're gonna apply this to your kids, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, how parental behavior and how the home and school environment can affect gene expression, meaning how this dental facial development shows up in your child, okay? So, <laughs> I travel a lot to teach, and guess what? <laughs> this is a, um, a very famous um, uh, supermarket chain in mm -hmm. the Houston, Texas in area. Texas. Mm -hmm. Yep. Everything is Texas sized and cheap. And so that's mm -hmm. how we end up with this kind of health crisis. Instead, I advocate for, you know, just healthier eating and seafood is rich in iodine, which is good for thyroid. Okay. And that's what fuels okay. the thyroid gland. This is what okay. powers our the thermostat. Okay. Mm -hmm. And lots of greens with bone broth. That's it. It's not that hard. Okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> here's a kid who came to me with epilepsy, grand mal seizures. Uh, 60 times an, uh, uh, an hour every night. Once a minute, he's having this kind of seizure. Mm -hmm. right. Nasal obstruction predisposes and worsens sleep to breathing disorder. That's another word for sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. Nasal obstruction is an important risk factor for sleep breathing disorder. Okay. So these are all old, old news way back in 20 years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this kid, she's got pinched nostrils. Chap lips, lip incompetence, no lip seal. Okay. Uh, her eyes, his eyes tilts downward like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. That means the jaw didn't grow enough this way, the upper jaw. Okay. Right. So, how does the kid get here? The parents need to be aware that pollution is everywhere. 
just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I bought a right. hundred fifty dollar over uh, over the kitchen sink counter uh, top uh, water filter. Mm -hmm. Here's what a clean one looks like. Here's what the same filter looks like six months later. No. You drink straight out of the tap, which is the case when you go out to eat, by the way, which mm -hmm. is the case when you ask for home meal deliveries straight out of the tap. This is what okay. you're taking, okay? So you wonder why your kids got allergies and stuffy nose and chapped lips. <clears throat> Here is a pile of snow 10 days after uh, it fell in the Washington DC suburb where I live. Here's evergreen, here's a cement wall, here's a gray sidewalk. This is suit from car exhaust. This is in our ambient air. If you mm -hmm. breathe through your mouth full time, this is what goes into your tonsils and your throat together mm -hmm. with the viruses. Okay, so we need to be aware of this kind of thing. Right. Low levels of environmental pollutant can slow fetal growth. Well, I don't know about you. I don't want my granddaughter to have her brain case slow down in its growth. Right. No way. Okay. Here's a study. <clears throat> 10 babies born in the U.S. in two months in 2004. The core blood has 287 industrial chemicals in it. This is core blood. Okay. That's feeding mm. a growing baby. I'm sorry, if, it doesn't, mm -hmm. if this does not get you angry, I don't know what will, okay? 180 of these will cause cancer in humans and animals. And mm -hmm. what are the sources? Pesticides, waste from burning coals and gasoline and garbage, and fast food packaging, clothing, textiles, and Teflon. All the better chemicals for better living right. is polluting us. Our bodies. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the plastics. Okay. Plastics mm -hmm. is a substance the earth cannot digest. Well, neither can your body or your baby. Mm -hmm. All right. There's pharmaceuticals in your restaurants, tap water, and in your home tap water. Okay. This is U.S. Geological Survey. That means everybody's Prozac, everybody's Viagra, everybody's, uh, uh, they're all in your um, um, birth control pills. They're all in your tap water. Our infrastructure is so terrible now that mm. if you don't filter your water, you're just asking for health trouble. When I go out, I do not order chicken unless I know the source because of this. Mary McKenna is a investigative journalist. Uh -huh. Okay, she wrote this book called Big Chicken, like in Big Pharma. An right. incredible story of how antibiotics created modern agriculture and changed the way the world eats. Hormones, okay? And how about Roundup and glyphosate? Uh, breakfast with a dose of Roundup. Wheat killer, okay, is now found in every one of the um, um, breakfast cereals aimed at children. Everyone uh, that's also based. It's so bad that the International General of Gynecology and Obstetricians came out with a position paper Okay, that basically says documented links between perinatal exposure to environmental chemicals and adverse health outcomes span the life course and include impacts on fertility and pregnancy, neurodevelopment, and cancer. cancer. Mm. Neurodevelopment, like all the learning disabilities and all the... Um, I'm sorry, uh, 
autistic spectrum disorders. Uh, you know, this is when neurodevelopmental disorders are. Mm -hmm. right? We need to look to what we do to our environment. And we need to realize that the mouse is the mission office between the external macro environment that's polluted now increasingly mm -hmm. to this pristine environment in which we expect our kids to grow. Right. So I believe all those previously mentioned factor is what mm -hmm. brought onto this impaired mouth development. He came in with deep overbite. That means the upper front teeth overlaps the lower front teeth 90%. It should be 10%. Okay. Okay. And epileptic seizures. So I asked myself, well, what can I do for this kid? <clears throat> and so I had him put on my thumbnail with the gloves on. And my assistant and I quickly added this onto his lower teeth. No shots, just bonded, like cured some uh, filling material over his baby molars. <clears throat> so that when he closes down, he does not have this deep overbite anymore. The whole okay. thing took about 15 minutes. Wow. So a week later, he straightened up. A week? Yeah. And <clears throat> later on, we expanded him. So we got his height. Now we get in his width. So he's starting to get wider. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, long story short, <clears throat> he went from here to here and from here to here in six years. And the seizures stopped, everything stopped. Seizures stopped uh, very early on, like within the first three months. Amazing. Seizures happen as soon as start, uh, this happened. Mm -hmm. And um, when we put him on this and change his diet, I asked mom, hey, uh, what are you feeding your child? And she said, well, we're vegetarian because we think it's cleaner for them. I said, well, maybe, but the brain is 90% or 80% fat, sorry. The body's 80% uh, fat and 80% water. Maybe you want to add some fish oil and some um, eggs to this uh, diet of yours. And she did, and sure enough, seizure stopped. Amazing. So mm. fast forward six years, she went, he went from here to here. We still have some leftovers. Mm. You can see the lips there a little chapped. Mm -hmm. It's still narrow, but guess what? It's, he's a church organist now mm. that means his brain is working very well <clears throat> so there's a chiropractor named dr paul check he wrote a mm -hmm. paper called totem pole hierarchy of survival reflexes okay he asked the question what must work in the body for survival and his answers and uh, are breathing, eating, vision, hearing, turning head, digestion, reproductions, and locomotion. Okay. Okay, hunting and gathering. <clears throat> so of all these eight, I can make a case that five of these relate to the mouth. Certainly the top two. So right, and what eating. airway mouth doctor does is the top of the healthcare totem pole. Okay. This is completely consistent with what I said earlier about the holistic mouth, okay? So I just want to quickly show you a couple more cases to conclude this, because I know we've run kind of long. That's all right. No, we're doing great. All right. <clears throat> so here's scoliosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see that she's twisted this way. And 12 months later, she becomes like this, right? Mm -hmm. Here, you can see that her neck was way forward in this profile posture, and now she's straightened up. Natural. Nine months. We didn't have the floor. Oh, stand up straight. <clears throat> she started out with this 
dental midline saw. Mm -hmm. That's usually because the upper jaw is too narrow. And we okay. give her our appliance so that her midlines are off. And look what happened to her feet. Before treatment, they collapse inward a lot so that you can see mm -hmm. a lot of this convexity on the outside. And now it's starting to become normal. Now it's starting to become normal. Excuse me. It's not completely normal yet, but we're on our way. Mm -hmm. And here's a frontal posture where I ask her to wear the same t-shirt. Mm -hmm. A month later, you can see that it's way different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's slanted so, in the beginning. Yeah, so there's an oral contribution to many, many medical dental and uh, uh, mood symptoms. And once you fix the mouth, they all get better. That's mm -hmm. the point I'm trying. Okay. And that's back to your mind, body, mouth, airway. Exactly. Circle. And if this is not fixed, if this scoliosis is not fixed, uh, it's a lifetime of pain in adulthood. Right. <clears throat> And anxiety and depression and everything else that can impact. And the self-esteem that goes with it. Right. Yeah. So uh, you are not only what you eat, but you're also how you sleep and how your body aligns. Because your body alignment is how it works in life. Within this field of gravity that never stops pulling us toward the grave 24-7 for as long mm -hmm. as you live, okay? So <clears throat> here's my granddaughter, uh, and uh, this he she is a living experiment, right? To prove my point. So mm -hmm. ever since she was born, every meal that goes into her mouth is personally prepared by my son, who is a professional chef, Okay, Franklin, okay? And this is his stepdaughter, and this is the lunch she gets to bring to school. And in the book, I talk about her classmates' reaction. He says, are you on some kind of diet? Do you have some <laughs> illness? Why are you eating so healthy? They say, you want to try some of my Fruit Loops? <clears throat> she said, what's that? He said, here. She tried it, and he said, eh. He said, what's the matter? You don't like it? No, I don't like anything that tastes like plastic. Mm, wow. So that wow. ability to tell is nurtured at home with healthy eating. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when a kid is this age, as soon as you get to weaning age, meaning that the baby teeth starting to come in, you give them something crunchy to chew. Okay. This mm -hmm. is based on a book written by a um, couple of um, nurses in the British National Health Service. It's called mm -hmm. Baby Led Weaning. Every <clears throat> prospective mother needs to have this book. Every dentist, every healthcare professional should have this book in their waiting room or in their library. Okay. <laughs> it means that as soon as the baby teeth start to come through, give them something crunchy to chew. Start working those jaw muscles right. so that they're not mushing it. Okay, mushy teeth do not grow jaws and faces. Form right. follows function. If you want and to crunchy does form, opens yeah. it up. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so <clears throat> well, fast forward. Um, she got fed with uh, this kind of food. That's the stepdaughters. Uh, this is their family staple. And so my son Franklin actually runs a um, um, website called Cook to Thrive, number two. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. the purpose to help parents turn um, a healthy food made tasty at home. Okay, it's called Cook to Thrive. And it's just a, basically a weekly subscription of professionally planned meals. Uh, as if, you know, the chef at the restaurant was going to plan it. And okay. uh, I your shopping list and you will have a well-stocked fridge and pantry and you can make dishes like this that makes me want to eat it okay. right 
And so this is what happens to kids, okay? So my granddaughter looks mm -hmm. like this, okay? So this is no expander, just good nutrition is a good start in life, okay? okay? And it's not just me, okay? This is someone else. This is someone else, okay? Good faces mm -hmm. come from good nurturing by parents. And parents need informed, well-versed, airway mouth doctors and mouth consultants to help them. Okay. So I want to conclude by reiterating this point. Disorder of fa the failure to grow, failure to thrive in this region mm -hmm. is the source of impaired mouth syndrome and a lifetime of suffering and ever escalating healthcare bills, all right? So mm -hmm. we desperately need a new breed of airway mouth doctors, okay? Yes. To take charge of oral facial growth. So here's what we do. Here's a case. The mother, like I said, was a uh, patient of mine. So she knew what to look for and she knew her daughter was in need of help. And mm -hmm. so we did our homework. So underneath the surface, there is this airway. Not quite ideal. That's why she had a luck, lackluster look. Mm -hmm. So we did our homework. It's called 3D jaw diagnostics. I can tell up and down, front and back, what's off. And I can tell side to side what's off. These are the mm -hmm. three dimensions that account for this discrepancy. Once okay. we know this, we know we need to expand her side to side, okay? Once we know this, we know we need to grow her front and back. So mm -hmm. think of a mouth space as say an accordion. Okay. Okay, where is it squished? Where do we need to expand? You know, okay. I make that tongue, okay? You know, I right. make all the teeth. Well, we design our appliance based on that knowing, and this is what happens. 42 months, you went from here to here and from here to That's here. That's amazing. That is just amazing. And this is what happens to this face. I don't know about you, but I think I'd like to have one of these girls in my, uh, in my uh, home too. I mean, that'd be a pure yeah. joy, right? Just to mm -hmm. behold. But they're wonderfully um, dispositioned human beings. They're not grumpy, they're pleasant, they're smart, uh, they're just a joy to be around. So in the book here, we have a um, um, survey that you can uh -huh. fill out, red flags on your child's best face. This is specific for children. And uh, okay. uh, the next step you need to do is just, you know, find a uh, airway mouth doctor. We're just trying to train this as like the first roll of the snowball. And mm -hmm. with your help, uh, we can identify more dentists who want to raise their hand and say, hey, I want to help do this work in my community. So for all you parents out there, I would say the best time to evaluate and treat is somewhere age seven to nine. Because during okay. that age, kids want to please the adults, want to please the parents the doctor. If uh, you have serious problem before then, of course, uh, trained uh, doctors will intervene. Uh, I teach standards on how to become airway mouth doctors. And uh, we uh, will show them when you must do what. But generally, before uh, they're old enough, we try not to get, I'm very minimally invasive and I'm I like to get the mothers to do the right thing for the kid naturally first. And we okay. intervene only when we need to. Doesn't mean we won't intervene early than, uh, earlier than seven and nine, okay? So sound LTT is present. It's never too late. That means whether you're a parent or an adult after, I mean, uh, adult after you're done growing, or your braces uh, treatment failed and relapsed back to crowding or open bite, um, we can help you, okay? okay? So make sure you have healthy teeth. 
and parents just watch for red flags mm -hmm. and you can do wonders with healthy eating at home and you team up with a trained AMD and the answer is all in this book and here's how to get in touch with me. So with that, Absolutely love that, thank you for the opportunity to share this information with you. I cannot thank you enough for all of this. And, and I will also make sure to put links to everything in the show notes, just to try to make it easier for parents and, and medical professionals to find everything. So thank you so much, Dr. Lao. Thank you. Truly, thank you for all of this. I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to um, uh, share with your uh, members and your um, uh, followers. Uh, you do great work and we appreciate your contribution to the community. Thank you.